So I thank you for coming. I thank you so much that you kept your energy and you kept, you know, laughing and... Oh, my gosh. So today we're going to do a little something different for you. There we go. We're okay. going to take some questions from some of the audience members. So where is Sherry from Brooklyn? Stand up, Sherry. Oh, hey! So Sherry. Sherry wants to know, why did your parents spell your name with an I instead of a Y? Because she's Sherry with a Y. Oh, she's Sherry. First of all, my parents, it was, they was drinking when they, <laughs> when they had me. And they weren't even... So they wanted to name me Sherry after the drink. And then they also liked the song by Frankie Valley, I think it was. Sherry. They liked that song. And they didn't know how either one was spelled. <laughs> My daddy had turned... My daddy was just like Marco. He turned on the charm. My mama didn't know what to do. I think they just said, whatever, and just <laughs> threw the eye on there. There you go, Sherry. It's, seriously. Where is George <laughs> from Ghana? Oh, George from Ghana. Ghana. You came up... What bus did you take to get here? <laughs> Ghana. Was that... Did the A train get you here from Ghana? <laughs> from Ghana. All right. Up via Uptown. Okay. Uh -huh. So he wasn't on Sherry... Why you ain't paid Ken Whitley's light bill yet? When can she get that check from you? So if you don't know, one of my besties, Kim Whitley, who I'm on tour with, with my Two Funny Mamas tour, um, at her house, Kim is fortunate enough, because we were struggling together, she was fortunate enough to buy a house and it has a tennis court on it. So we get, we, during the pandemic, we would give roller skating parties, Whitley on wheels, that's what we called it. And so it's just big enough to have parties and we have like my, our Memorial Day parties there. So I thought, you know, I told, I told Kim this, I'm having my birthday party. Oh no, it was a going away party because I was moving to New York. Having a going away party, Kim said, okay. And I, so this girl, first of all, she cheap as all get up. <laughs> I never seen nobody wear cheap. So the tennis court has got these big lights on there. So when it, when it became nighttime and everybody's trying to skate, it was dark in her yard. <laughs> and I say to Kim, Kim, you gotta put the lights on. And she's like, you know how much it costs to put the tennis court lights on? Well, then, <laughs> Bitch, what you buy a house with a tennis court for? <laughs> So it's like, and I go, so Sheila E is trying to skate. I go, Sheila E cannot fall. She got to go on tour next week. Now, how's she going to look with two braces on her leg? So I'm begging her camp. And so this is what she do. She turn on the lights in the pool and go, we going to use the lights in the pool. Nobody is swimming. We on the tennis court. <laughs> Kim, now, since then, she come out with a phone with her lights on tomorrow. Everybody turn on their cell phone. <laughs> you got a sitcom out. You got, like, you a working actress. She gave us such a hard time. So she finally, I, she turned on the lights and was complaining the whole time. Sheila, get off the court. It's time to get off. And was barking rules at everybody. Made my dog on going away party. Everything. Oh, my gosh. So then... At the end, I said, Kim, thank you. I hired a cleanup crew to clean up. It didn't even look like it was Kim Whitley's place. We took all the food. We got all the pictures, everything. I even put Joshua to bed, okay? <laughs> I did everything. And then this girl gonna come get, present me with the light bill <laughs> for her tennis court for the party. And I felt like, I, Kim, I did everything. I didn't, you don't have to pay for nothing. You had a great party, you got to, and she, and to this day, did she tell you, to, did she put you in here as a plant? Cause that's what I'm starting to think. Every day she keeps talking about this doggone light bill. Every day, this light bill, this light bill. And I'm like, I'm not, now I was gonna give her some. Now I'm not, cause you asked me, I'm not paying nothing. I was gonna do it. Oh, so Kim. you can text Kim and DM her and go, Sherry said, and her neck was moving, I'm not paying nothing. Take me to court. Oh, my goodness. Okay, the, the last question that we have time, time for, where's Tracy from D.C.? Tracy, my neck of the woods, the DMV. This is the question you get asked the most. What? Sherry, what was it like working on the Jamie Foxx show? What, uh, did you love playing the role of Sheila? When I tell you, that was a dream come true working on The Jamie Foxx Show. First of all, I've known Jamie since he started comedy, when he had pimples all over his face, <laughs> when he didn't have any money. Jamie had stayed at my place when, you know, a girlfriend put him out and he didn't have nowhere to stay. And um, I gave him money to get a haircut for, for when he auditioned for In Living Color. So we've known each other a long time. But then he rose to this level, you know, of an actor. He was on The Jamie Foxx Show. And the role that they had written for me was only supposed to be for one, I think I was playing, my, my name was Sheila, and I played Fancy's best friend in her sister circle. And it was only supposed to be one time. 
I was coming on there. As a matter of fact, a girlfriend of mine, Sandy, who's a comic, had been written in as a recurring to play Fancy's best friend. So we were both in the scene with all of the women. And I was like, you know, Jamie just gives you a good time. He's a, he just was making everybody laugh. And it was such a great set. And I said, I want to come back on this show. And so they happened to put me uh, next to Jamie. And I, didn't, I only had one line. And I said, what can I do to get Jamie's attention? So as he was talking, I think I put my hand on his thigh. And he looked at my hand, and he took it, and he put it on my thigh. And then I said, what, what else can I do? And then I, I, then I leaned up in his neck, and I sniffed <laughs> really as he was talking, and it made Jamie laugh. And the thing about Fox is, if you make him laugh, he has you around. And so he kept laughing. And then Garcelle, and I was like, oh my God, she's so pretty. I like want to hang out with her. And so Garcelle was like, Jamie, you need to bring her back because she's funny. And I made everybody on the cast and crew laugh because I didn't say anything, but I just decided to take a risk and step past the fear. And then Jamie kept bringing me back. And, but then I felt bad, because Sandy called me. She was like, bitch, I ain't got no job. They said they don't need me no more. <laughs> but every episode of working on the Jamie Foxx show, when I tell you we came in laughing every single day, there was a scene, I think it was called Poppin' Collars, where I had to do a video. I wanted to be in Jamie's video shoot. And so he had me dance, and yet I had to dance. <laughs> Um, and first of all, to fit into the outfit, I literally, I didn't eat nothing. I was like not eating nothing. I was drinking water, so I was already dizzy. But the first time when I, I think I was on like a California shake and I kept, I kept doing it. And Jamie laughed so hard, he kept having him do the scene over and over. <laughs> And that's the thing, you know if you make Fox laugh, he's gonna write you more stuff, he's gonna have you more episodes. And I was so, and that's why I was doing this. <laughs> After I danced because I was so tired. But the thing that I love is every time I, Jamie wrote me something, he knew that he could trust me to make it funny. So that's, so working on the Jamie Foxx show is Sheila and I gained friends, Garcelle Bouvet and I are the closest. We, like that's my love, Garcelle Bouvet. We've always remained friends through everything. And so it was just, it's one of those dream come trues. And I keep telling, um, I would always tell Jamie and Garcelle, like, we got to do the Jamie Foxx show again, like a live uh, something. <laughs> so yeah, so that always made him laugh. And I was like, just let's do something together. We had one episode where uh, Fancy, they were getting married, and we had our bachelorette party. And so we had to walk around. All of the girls had to walk around in lingerie the whole time. I've never seen more men on that set. Jamie, <laughs> more athletes. It was, and J Gar Garcelle had to curse everybody out. It was just like, and I was like, I like it. I took my robe off. I was like, I, this is nice. What? Um, but it was just, it was a lot of fun doing the Jamie Foxx show. He's so much fun, so keep him in your prayers because he's still got a lot more to do. Thank you so much today. And listen, you were so funny. You made one of the pretty ladies on the front row snort. So you know <laughs> All right. See, we get to, once, once John explains stuff to me, we, we, then we get, on, we get it locked She's up. She's not usually like this. She's, <laughs> yes, I am, all the time. <laughs> hey, what y'all don't see is once I get out on the couch, I'm good. But before that, because you know, you know how your kids act out with, with, your, with the parents because you're their safe space. And they, so they get, to, they get to do all this stuff and then they go out and everybody goes, oh, they're so amazing. You go, not my child. <laughs> so with, with John, nobody else gets it. He's the safe space that I could like go crazy on. So whenever he comes to my room, he goes, it, are we having a Tasmanian devil today? <laughs> or we have? So this is, I am like this every day, and that's why behind the doors, when you guys are, when they're going, we're going to have a good time, and I'm standing there, and I'm going through my, and I go, John, I'm not funny today. He goes, you are so funny. I went, I'm not funny! <laughs> if nothing you say is going to make me funny! And then you come running through that door. And so it is John holding my hand, going, he starts praying with me, and I'm like, I don't want no prayer. And he starts praying, and he starts praying for you, the audience, and the audience who's watching. 
Well, now now it's John that's going to keep you from going into overtime because you so got to cut some promos. Oh, so now I'm going to... And then he says, Sherry, the audience is going to feel better and I go, than when they came. And that calms me down. And I still go, I'm not funny. And then, the, but the door is open and then you just got to go for it. So thank y'all so much.